Welcome to the first podcast of the Authors Bridge Group. Uh, we are here privileged uh, to be in the company of Mr. Mark Jeremy Clifton. Uh, Mark is a British author and a writer of songs and introspective poetry, short stories, um, and of course wrote his children's book series, The Adventures of the Gooey, the Slime, that was in 2017, which were created and written for his daughter. Uh, Mark is also in process of creating a self-development book, Seven Steps to Reconnect with Your Inner Hero, which will hopefully will be available soon for all of us to enjoy. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Wow, thank you, Agatha. What a lovely building that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with a very important question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Good. Have you ever Googled yourself? <laughs> I have, actually, I have. What have you I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> what have you found? Nothing I particularly like very much, but I do it with myself. No, no I mean, it, it, yeah, you just check these things out from time to time. You know, it doesn't mean you're a narcissist. Just have to go check it out. Just making sure that all is in there, as it should be. Uh, Absolutely. But on, a, on a serious note, uh, first question that comes to my mind, what is your favourite book of any kind uh, and any author and why? It's quite interesting, actually. I'm always always have been drawn to um, spy thriller type um, genres, and I never knew why. But my I thought back thought about this, and my father um, was born in Germany, and he came to the UK at a very young age, and always was very secretive about things. And I suppose maybe that had an impact on me uh, subconsciously. Um, and I've always been drawn to these kind of espionage style thriller, um, spy thriller type books. So that's the kind of thing that I enjoy reading for some reason. That's my, my bag. Okay. Thank you. Um, has any book for that matter, maybe the, the espionage book, but any book for that matter made you cry? <laughs> No, no, no books. Well, the only example that I can think of that did make me cry, and this is completely uh, left of centre, but it, I was thinking about it, was uh, when I was in China um, my, with my daughter, actually, we went into a bookshop and um, she, she said, can I have a book? I said, absolutely, you know, find a book that you, you know, you'd like. And for some unknown reason, anyway, she reached out for The Giving Tree. Uh, which I didn't, wasn't even aware of, um, and uh, by Shel Shel Silverstein, and I got her the book, and we went went outside the the store, and I said, "Why don't you know? Why don't you read it a little bit?" And she read it to me, and it was such an emotional book. Hold on a minute, was this in English, Mark? Yes, you know, yes, China yes. was a book in English. Let's just. It was in English. It was an English store, international bookstore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, otherwise we would have had a few problems. Um, <laughs> But, but I mean, she sat there and she started to read it to me and I just felt this overwhelming emotion just start to take hold of me and like a lump in my throat. And she was reading it so beautifully and we read it together and we were looking at the pictures and everything and I suddenly got an idea of what it was about. And I, yeah, I actually felt little tears well up. So I have to say that was the experience that I can share with you on that one. Oh, that's, that's, that's very nice. That's very nice. I suppose if, the words came from anybody else but your daughter, I suppose. Maybe it wouldn't have been. Uh, Possibly. That emotional. Possibly. Maybe. It did have an impact so, on me, though. That's right. That's right. Um, what is the reason for which you wrote your first book? Well, <clears throat> part of my philosophy is what I call the reconnection philosophy is about um, lost spirits, lost souls. And... Most of us, in my opinion anyway, adapt to life rather than follow our instincts. This is my key eth you know, ethos for, for my whole program and everything. And it's based on an, this ex particular experience, that, you know, based on the question you asked me, because I'd been living predominantly working in sales and marketing and corporate stuff for a long period of time. And I, for the best part of it, enjoyed the packaging and the social aspects and all the superficial bits that went with it for a while but really I, I was like in a trap nerve I mean it really wasn't for me at all and I do remember I had this fantastic job um, here in, in Budapest where I'm located right now um, and 
I remember sitting in the office there. I'd pretty much done all the groundwork and there was very little for me to do, which in some ways was great because I could play. But I mean, really, after a period of doing that, you know, you get to a sort of stage where there's nothing really left. And I just remember just feeling this sense of absolute redundancy, emotional redundancy and loss. And just, I just knew it welled up in me. Anyway, I resigned within a week. I just couldn't do it anymore. And I went to my apartment and I just sat there for, I don't know, maybe a week or so, two weeks, just in a state of, I don't know, just loss and numbness. And uh, very shortly after that, to cut a long story short, I started to write because this was what was within me and it's something I'd blocked out for absolutely well all my life. Um, and I started to write and it wasn't planned. It just started to organically come out. Um, so this was like a natural response to my situation and the and it, the only reason that sort of took any hold other than me just writing or expressing myself was a friend came by i think after a while one wants to know what had happened to me and he came by and he could see all this like mass sprawl of of writing and said what the hell's this i said i don't know i just was writing and he picked up a couple of the lyrics as they were poets poems or lyrics and said these are good you know you should do something with this and I thought about it and this was the beginning of you know them becoming something more than just scroll is this so the this poetry is, is this the poetry yeah this is the poetry that, in right. respect to your view on life and stuff right so, so when did the songs come into play well the, okay, interesting what, the voice. what I've done there <laughs> yeah very good the, the, the voice the voice was lyrical, so it was poetry. It had a kind of lyrical tilt, a uh, lilt or tilt to it. And um, yeah, it just came out that way. And in the end, what actually happened was they, I wrote them down as like free verse, but I actually put music to some of them because they did have that kind of feel. So it, it was just a kind of lyrical expression. That's how it came out. Can you, can you play an instrument? Was that your um, well, music in the back? That, no. That was another block, you see. Um, I'd always wanted to play an instrument uh, rather than being told to do it. You know, wanted to do it myself. And um, I did. I started to teach myself and I started to put music to the words. Um, but for me, I'll just cram this in because it's, it is significant. This was an emo emotional block for me because I didn't have the confidence or the self-belief to to do this so it's all very well doing it in your head but to actually do it is another thing altogether and um part of my challenge to myself was very very briefly i um i was separated from olivia during the time i was in china they went back to, to budapest i stayed in china and i remember having a conversation with olivia when she when she arrived back that's my daughter and uh she said to me so when, it, when, are you, when are you coming back? And I couldn't really answer that question because it was an unknown at the time. I said, well, I'll be definitely back for Christmas. She was about six or seven at the time and that meant absolutely nothing to her in terms of time. And I felt something inside of me just snap because, you know, again, here I was living this kind of self-contained, comfortable life, but with nothing of any depth going on within it other than just sort of living and I said right well the thing I'm going to do now Mr Wright is I'm going to write a letter to her and then I realized writing a letter was absolutely redundant to a six or seven year old I mean she really wouldn't get the essence of it and it just so happened that I happened to be I don't know in corner of my eye watching this tv series that happened to be on which was uh, about music and the key actor or the protagonist in this particular drama said, came out with these words that just resonated with me. To write a song, you just need a story and three chords. And I just thought, hmm. So I put the letter into words, into lyrics, which is something I'm quite good at or feel quite natural, um, naturally, uh, naturally um, able to do. And I taught myself three chords that had a sound that a rhythm that fitted in with the, and I, I put it together over a period of time and my challenge 
was to perform it for Olivia uh, when I got back at the, at the Christmas period, which I did. And that was probably one of the most significant things I've ever done because actually to connect with my daughter I'd been away from for months and to connect a message to her in the format, in, in the form that I wanted to do, that meant the most to me, was, yeah, was significant. So that was part of this process I'm talking about. I understand <gasps> that. Um, <laughs> I understand that trumpet was not the instrument of your choice. Definitely not the trumpet. No. <laughs> what was it then? Guitar? Guitar. Guitar. It was guitar. Well, it was, well, definitely wasn't the trumpet. I haven't got enough wind for that. <laughs> It'll be quite hard to sing and trumpet at yeah. the same time. <laughs> so um, with that, have you managed to go beyond your three chords? Yes. Oh, for okay. sure now. Yeah. Uh, That's I've great. So quite a few songs now. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day we'll be privileged to, to have you uh, perform. Oh, privilege? I don't know about that. But... <laughs> 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 all right lovely thank you for sharing the story it's very personal but i suppose that's that's why we do these things those things are personal to us and this is how we grow and they have a, such a deep deep meaning and um and we never know when the story will start uh with what the story will start what situation as well um i the first book that i wanted to write i haven't written it yet well actually no i've written it part of it and I threw it away <laughs> because it was just too painful, you know, because it was a different subject that I wanted to write about. And then they, I decided to then to move on from that subject. Um, so therefore I threw it away. Uh, maybe I'll write about it one day. So the next question would be to you. Um, I've got my questions written on the side here, just in case you're wondering why I'm looking away. Uh, what is the most satisfying or most enjoyable part of the writing process for you? Um, to see the the concept become a reality for sure. Um, it's just like you say, you know, I've also written a whole load of things and chucked them uh, because mostly about uh, confidence, self-belief that they were any good or valid or had any significance. Um, I think it, that is an underlying feature with all of this because unless you've been doing it since you were 10 or something, you know, and you built it up. A lot of the th a lot of the skills that people have, um, I've read into this quite a lot, and you know, you can witness it just by seeing other people's stories. Is that people have become good over a period of time, consistently doing something for a period of time, um, yeah. and I think for a lot of us now in the last couple of years, we've adapted or adopted new skills um, that we never had before. And for me, in the writing side of things, yeah, it was obviously always within me, but I didn't have the practice, the knowledge, the, the experience, the belief, the validation to do any of this. I mean, who am I to do this? Blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> That's right. And, and I think what, what was missing for me, and maybe for you too, is the question of the why. Why am I doing this? And um, yes. I think I needed, in my particular case, part of my story is because of my daughter. And it was her that kind of spurred me on to, to complete something. Otherwise, I'd have been, I should imagine, most of it by now. Right. The, I think the why is the part that is so, re is so relevant to whatever mm. we do. Also, any aspect of life, we need to get to know the why. Um, maybe that's a... That's a title for another book. Why? <laughs> so we never know. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, what has been the biggest challenge for you as a writer and author? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, that's that's quite easy to answer because I'm very uh, ideas orientated, very conceptual. And when it comes to me, I'm pretty good at putting it down. Um, organically, you know, the idea that comes to me. And I'm not detail orientated. I am not the best implementer, the best finisher of projects, but have good insight, creativity, conceptualization of things. So for me, when someone gets hold of something of mine and starts to, you know, do this and adapt and change and amend and edit that is like 
yeah i'm not i lose kind of, i suppose it's good because i lose i become detached from it i feel like someone's messing around with my stuff and i'm i'm not you know not say displeased about it i just feel the minute someone starts to say well you should cut this out and do this and do that unless it really resonates with me immediately i'm like so for me i think i'm good at letting it go uh coming up with it and letting it go anything further than that yeah it becomes a challenge i think for me i think i can question Hopefully yes i can i can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i can I, I feel what you're saying uh after i would in my first uh, draft of uh, of the book and I sent it off for kind of sense editing and it literally came back with just like red pen everywhere and I thought oh it just feels so bad because what I thought was the message it actually wasn't or for somebody for the reader wasn't the message and I had to reevaluate kind of okay I'm writing it for me but I also need to think about how they're going to react by reading mm -hmm. it and whether it makes sense and it was a little bit like taking the wind out of my sails yeah. <laughs> and I had to yes. digest it. Uh, I, my ego took a beating and, uh, and I had to go back to the drawing board and start again. So I absolutely, I, yes, I, I align with you on this one. Yeah, um, I, th I think it's, it's very, it, it really is quite a, a frustrating thing because ultimately it wouldn't even start unless you had the idea, right? The idea, the, right. you know, the thing that you've created. So for somebody who really hadn't come up with that thing, unless they really are in line with what you're trying to do. Uh, I wrote a short story while I was away uh, in China and I was very excited about it. It was quite a humorous short story and I wrote it and I got someone to edit it for me. And they said, well, you know, the idea of it's good, but it's missing this, missing that, missing the eyes like, oh God, you know, all of the joy is suddenly drained from me. Yes. Uh, Yes, I felt that <laughs> not so long ago. <laughs> it took me a while to get back. Um, all right. If you could tell your younger writing self anything, what could it be? Yeah. So for me, uh, what I would say to my younger self is, you know, without doubt, just follow your instinct, follow your nature and do it. Um, as I was previously saying, the commercial from nike just do it hello can you hear me yes yes we're here yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the commercial from nike just do it is the most amazing impactful you know ad message that i've ever seen and it's so simple uh, but it's so true because so many people are living in their comfort zones living in their heads they're not doing what they could actually be doing okay yeah, so just do it and so just... that would be the message <laughs> Yeah, just get on with it, do it. Yeah, shame we're not sure. getting paid from Nike for spreading the word. <laughs> so that'll be nice. <laughs> uh, so, um, right, so I'm sure you're working on something right now. What would that be? Yeah, I've actually now we've got the fine, well, the final, the fourth version, the fourth in the series of the GUI, uh, in the GUI series, um, which is the storybook. So I started this out as picture books. I did with Olivia. Um, I did it with and for Olivia as a kind of legacy, as in a connection process for her to see something. Uh, that it was really the idea of it was she had the idea of a story and I listened to it and I really liked it. Um, and then I put it on the back burner as most people do forever. And then during this COVID period, I made sure that they actually, you know, took shape. And the first two were created as picture books because they're very visual. But then we started off doing storybooks and we've already done one, which is called The Family Dinner. And now we've got Gooey Saves the Day, which is the second in that particular series. And that'll be out before Christmas. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Oh, great. So where, where will people be able to find Gooey? Um, Gooey? The Gooey series. <laughs> the, the Gooey series. Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, it's a very good question. Well, we, I've got some. I've got a Facebook page. I've got an Instagram page. Um, we've got the Amazon links. I'll be promoting those, obviously, as we leave up and once the book is ready to go. Um, but maybe we can put some links on the um, on the broadcast for people to have a look at. Yes, we'll do that. And as you said, people can find you on Facebook. People can find you on Instagram as well. They just type in your name, and they will find you. 
They'll be able well, to yeah, I would recommend right now because I'm not really a, a world renowned author as yet anyway uh, if they put the you know gooey or the adventures of gooey the slime because it's all about slime and gooey stuff they should find the books i'll make sure i put uh, the description for the books uh, into the verbal description of, <laughs> of our podcast as well we uh, and yeah. and links as well uh, so just kind of a curious question simply because i'm going through it as well you know money as author you know they, they just like pouring out of your pocket uh, for editing, for artwork, for this, for that. So I'm just wondering, normally we go, oh my gosh, this is so expensive, that is so expensive. It, it just costs so much money to, to publish a book. But just to flip it a little bit and look into the positives, what is the best money ever spent that you've spent as an author? Oh boy. Well, <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, in my particular case, uh, the children, let's say the children's books, uh, they require illustration. And Olivia wants to do that. And then, of course, at the age of her age, she really doesn't have the time, energy or the commitment fat. And I'm certainly not an illustrator. So as it happened, I came across one who happened to be a renowned local artist. And he said he would do it for a nominal fee in the end. Um, so that, without doubt, was the best money I spent because he made the book come alive. And actually, once I showed Olivia the pictures and said, do you like them? And she said, yeah, they were great. We were all, you know, all in alignment with it. That was, without doubt, the, the, the best money because, it, you know, it made the book real. Um, I've had another challenge subsequent to that because now I'm not there anymore and he's busy with other projects to find some. But yeah, so time will tell whether that investment <laughs> was was good. But you know, this woman seems to be diligent and quite, you know, quite gifted. So we'll see. But I think the the illustration is the thing that brings the book, you know, books to to life. So that's that right. Be it, uh, Mark. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have faced some challenges, uh, London, Budapest, Budapest, London, internet connection, but that has not stopped your powerful message. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much for sharing the, that private thought as well about uh, obviously the connection with your daughter, et cetera, and the story. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'm sure the listeners will appreciate that too. Thank you so much, Mark. Mm -hmm.